Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India A warm welcome to all my dear friends and uh, students. A very good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you. And this is the DADM2, which is Data Analysis and Decision Making 2 lecture series under NPTEL MOOC. And we are in the second week, and as you can see, this is lecture number 7, which is the second class in the second week. And as you know, this uh, total course DADM2 is for 12 weeks and the to total number of hours is 30 hours and total number of lectures is 60 lectures because each week we have 5 lectures each for half an hour and after the each week classes we have assignments. So, we have already finished one set of assignments after assign um, week 1 and we will soon go for the week 2 assignments. And as you know my name is Raghunandan Sengupta from the IME department IIT Kanpur. So, if you remember uh, the last slide which we were discussing in lecture number 6 was basically to find out the actual characteristics of the uh, utility function. So, we have no considering we have no information about the utility function. So, based on that I, I proceeded I did discuss and I also did mention in the last few minutes of the last class that will again come back to the same slide and try to discuss the same points once again. Maybe for some of you it may be repetition, but I think it will be good that if you discuss so you un understand at, at least in a very simplistic conceptual way how this uh, whole idea can be utilized in order to basically proceed forward and find out about the utility function. So, this is the slide which I have and uh, along the y axis we have values of c and now the c values are the certainty values. So, they will change depending on the problem which we have. So, let us be aware of that point 1. Point number 2 is that along the x axis we have basically the values of the gamble which based on which we are trying to find out the c values. So, the values are a and b, a and b can be changed and we are considering a fair gamble in the sense the probabilities of the coin coming ahead or the coin coming a tail are equal then they are half. So, let us basically do the thought out experiment and, and whatever it is this graph signifies. Also note the blue line which is 45 degrees line is drawn in order to be make us understand that what type of utility function it is which we are going to basically draw depending on the response from the person who is taking a decision. We will come to that very soon. Consider A and B are assumed as they are given in this slide. So, let me just highlight it. So, this is A, this is B, the values are given. Now, consider that it is a fair gamble probability is half. So, you will basically have a into half plus b into half it will be a plus b by 2. So, that will be a straight line in between midpoint between a and b. So, let me use a color let me use the red color so, and, and, and it is bold because it is now we know the expected value. And once we reach the 45 degrees line, what we do is that we go horizontally onto the left and mark this value as C for example, C 1. So, now the experiment goes like this on table 1 on the left hand side we have A and B and we have a coin which is probability half and half and on table 2 which is on the right hand side we have the so called C 1 value. We do not know whether C 1 is a certainty value till now. I will I am using the symbol C, but that is just for the nomenclature sake, but we do not know actually it is a certainty equivalent for that person who is going to make the decision. So, we call that person ask him that there is a fair gamble with values A and B probabilities and half and half and on the right hand side there is a value of C 1. So, what is his or her decision? 
if the person is indifferent between the fair gamble and the C 1 value, then be certain that the C 1 value which is kept in front of him is the certainty value, because he is taking a decision based on the expected value of the gamble and the certainty value. So, the obviously that is on the straight line. So, we will assume that the person has a utility function which is linear which is u w is equal to w. Now, that is just an hypothetical case. Consider the other two cases and which are more likely. The person says that no, he is going to take the gamble. In that case, it means the certainty value based on which he will take a decision whether to take that gamble which is given in front of him with values a and b and the value of certainty on the right hand side that c 1 is not no more a certainty value for him remember that. Because the va expected value which he has and the certainty value which he assumes to be would be in such a way that the certainty value is now c 2 which can be say for example, greater or less than c 1 I will come to that why can be it can be greater and less than c 1. So, if it is greater than and less one less than um, or, le or less than c 1 then the values of c 2 which we are assuming would be either above this 45 degrees line. So, I will basically populate that with some ok. If it is greater so, no green will not do sorry 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 I will choose uh, the the yellow color. So, if C 2 is greater they will be in this region and C 2 is less which is below C 1. So, the values will be here. which technically means that the utility function which we are talking about would obviously have a first derivative as greater than 0, because as the non satiation characteristics, but greater than C 1 and less than C 1 basically in the long run as you basically play this game repeatedly would mean may basically the u double dash which is there for that person is either concave or convex in the sense that u double dash can be greater than 0 or less than 0 depending on whether the person wants the risk or does not want the risk that would basically come out. Now, what you do is that keep changing a and b. So, change a and change b also, but do not change the probability if it remains a fair gamble. So, obviously, c 1 value changes. So, which is the expected value of, of a and b taken and again uh, you ask the person that whether you want to take that new value of a and the or the new value of b which is now now a 1 b 1 or the the certainty or the so called fixed value which is kept on the table on the right hand side consider that is say for example, c 1 dash and let us again ask him or her what is his or her decision. Consider the person is is going to take a decision such that the certainty value for him is greater than c 1 dash or less than c 1 dash. So, again you will have a set of value which is above the blue line 45 degree lines or below the 45 degree lines. Again change a and b that means, now they are not a 1 and b 1 they are a 2 and b 2. Again find out the expected value which is now c 1 double dash. So, these dashes do not mean derivative remember that I am just giving a symbol. Again ask that person he says again that he is either greater than greater than c 1 double dash or less than c 1 double dash depending on the certainty value which is true for him or her mark that point. So, as you continue doing at as you continue taking taking different values of a and b you will have different values of c 1 dash or c 1 double dash and c 2 double dash so on and so forth the certainty value of that person would also keep changing. So, if you plot them you will have either a set of points which are over the 45 degrees line which is the blue one or below the 45 degrees line and if you join them you can find out whether it is a concave function or a convex function which means it will give you this. So, this would give you the rate of change of the utility function and you can also find out the double derivative based on which you can immediately find out the important points which are if you remember I have mentioned that there is a characteristics of a and a prime 
there is a characteristics of R and R prime which are basically absolute utility um, absolute risk uh, uh, aversion function and relative risk aversion function. Based on that you can find out what is the characteristics of the utility function such that you can say whether the utility function is quadratic, whether it is basically say for example exponential, whether it is logarithmic with this power function so on and so forth. So, without knowing the actual characteristics of the utility function you can draw do a very simple experiment, find out the characteristics and can you may comment something about the utility function based on which you are going to work or what is the utility function of the person to whom you are basically posing these questions. So, this is what, what the analysis what I discussed, I will again mention it. A and B are wealth values, some amount of wealth, values of the of, of wealth which is basically W. Also for the ease of our analysis we consider that the utility function is W which is linear which we have already discussed. Form a lottery that it has an outcome of A with a probability P and an outcome B with a probability 1 minus P. In this case to make our life simple I have said that the probabilities P and 1 minus P are half that is a fair gamble. So, that is that is the ease you can change P, uh, this half and half which are the probabilities to P and 1 minus P or to p and q and this p and q need not be half they can be in different values, but we are not going to discuss that because they just will only make things a little more, more intense, but the overall analysis remains the same. The third point mentions change the values of p and ask the investor how much certainty certain wealth or c he or she will have in place of the lottery. So, basically lottery is placed and on, on the other hand that value C 1 is placed whether that some amount delta amount has to be removed from C 1 or delta amount has to be added to C 1 such that the person is indifferent between the lottery and the, the amount of value which is kept on the right hand side of the table. So, obviously, in that case the person would be would have a certain value because he is balancing the utility which is he or she is getting from the um, uh, fair gamble and uh, what, what he or she is basically getting from the right hand side of the of the table which is basically the fixed value. Now, the expected value of the lottery as now p and 1 minus p are different. So, let us continue with that the expected value of the lottery are p into a plus 1 minus p into b which is the, the utility. So, I will mark it. So, this is the utility. We are considering remember we why the question may come up why we are considering A as the utility of A because we are considering a uniform uh, uh, utility function u w is equal to w if it changes obviously it will change accordingly. A risk of a person will have the value of C is uh, less than uh, he is he does not want to take the um, he is risk averse when let me check a risk of a person will have yes. In that case, the person would have a value such that just let me check. Yes, I think there is some, it would be let me check one minute. It would be a risk loving, sorry, my mistake. A risk loving person would have where the expected value of the lottery would be more than c because he is willing to take the risk. So, in that case p into a plus 1 minus p into b the overall value would be greater than c because that person is willing to take the risky decisions. Now, you plot the values of c and you have already have expected the values of the lotteries which is given. What you do is that keep plotting the expected value, keep plot plotting the actual value of C based on which the person will be indifferent. Once you plot them, they would be either along the straight line which is the 45 degree line, a set of curve which is over the blue line and on a certain or, or a certain of values which are below the blue line which is the 45 degrees line and you can find out what is the characteristics of that human being who is taking a decision, whether he, he or she wants to take a risk whether he or she is indifferent to risk and whether he or she is basically avoids wants to avoids the value of risk. How would you find the explicit form of the util function of a person? Suppose you know that it is of the form u w is equal to the exponential part which is minus e to the power minus a w. Now, here the point is util function is given which is exponential, but we do not know the value of a we have to find it out. 
you ask the person that given a lottery which has a 50 50 chance of winning which are the values are 10 lakhs and 40 lakhs uh, 4 lakhs sorry so 10 lakhs and, and 4 lakhs in order to buy this lottery what was he or she willing to pay now you put that answer to that person and you know that person has an exponential util function and say for example the person says that the lottery is there 10 lakhs and 4 lakhs uh, and some amount is there on uh, you want to keep a certain, certain amount on the right hand side and you know the person has an exponential utility function, but you do not know the value of a. Now, the person says that uh, I am indifferent between the lottery and uh, a certainty value and the certain value is c for example, 5 lakhs, which would immediately give you the information that the expected value of the lottery and the expected value of the utility should match for that person, because he or she is willing to either take the lottery or take the certainty value, which is say for example, in this case is 5 lakhs. So, in that case what will happen? The expected value of the certainty value multiplied. So, in that case expected value would be like this, I will just mark it out where it is, yes. So, it was 5 lakhs. So, obviously, the utility is this, I am just mark, marking with the yellow color and I will mark the, the certainty value with the yellow highlighter and the probability is 1. So, the expected value of the right hand side is given which is marked in yellow. Now, come to the other side left hand side. So, the probabilities are half and half. So, the probabilities are given 0 0.5, 0 0.5 and now what are the utilities you will ask. So, one the values of the wealth were 10 lakhs and 4 lakhs. So, the utility for 10 lakhs is given, utility of 4 lakhs is given, multiply each of them with given 0 0.5, 0 0.5, you get the expected value, balance that and find out the value of A. So, solving through iteration process, we can find out the value of A. So, let me continue reading it, whatever is given, because I have re repeated that, but I am still going to read it. Suppose the answer is 5 lakhs, which the person says that it then it means that the person is indifferent between a certain equivalent amount of 5 lakhs and the lottery which is a fair gamble. So, you balance the fair gamble value which is the expected value which is given in red balance with the yellow color yellow marked um, uh, expected value of the utility for the certainty value. Keep repeating this experiment for different values find out different sets of A's they would be changing because the iteration process and you find out the expected value of that and find out the best estimate which is for value for the value of A. Now, there are few axioms of utility functions an investor can always say whether A is. So, consider I am an investor, I am a decision maker and there are many different decisions in front of me. So, I, we will assume always that I am able to put my decision in such a way that either I am indifferent between A and B, whether I am I am willing to take A and not B and vice versa. Number 1. Number 2 is that if I have 3 decisions and in excuse me and in case if A is better than B, better in the sense what is the utility or the value which is coming to me, B is better than C, then A would always be better than C. Now, here I would like to pause in many of the non parametric decision making process which you are going to consider it may not be true in the sense that my decision for favoring a with respect to b is more towards a my decision for favoring a with respect to c is more more towards a but it may have um, it's uh, sorry in the case let me put it as b and c so my decision for taking uh, um, b with respect to c is more towards b so, obviously, from the first information I know A is better than B, from the second information I, I know that B is greater than C, but it may so happen that the decision that A is better than C may not happen in many of the practical situations where non parametric decision making are to, are to be taken in practical sense. But to overcome that, we will continue considering this axiom that A is uh, better than B and B is better than C would always imply A is better than C. We will continue doing that 
and where there is a change I will notify that. So, this is an important point which I wanted to mention. So, these problems will be coming up. If you remember I mentioned about data envelopment analysis, analytical hierarchy process, analytical network process, Electra, Topsys, Macbeth. So, all these processes which are non-parametric different type of multi criteria decision making, these type of issues would be coming, but I will mention that accordingly, so we can handle it. Consider the third uh, axiom it says that x is equal to uh, y, then assume we can combine x with another decision z such that x with the probability of p and z with the probability of 1, my p, 1 minus p such that on the same lines we have the same decision with z, z with, with y. So, in that case if both of them the expected values are same, then in that case it will be x plus z is equal to y plus z in the sense that the expected value which you are getting from combining x and z and the expected value we are which you are getting by combining y and z would give me the same utility based on which I am going to take a decision. That means, if there are two different sets of decisions for which the expected value are same, then I would definitely be indifferent between them. So, these decisions can be totally different. See for example, in one case I want to build a factory in, in the city of uh, say for example, Lucknow and another factory I want to be build in say for example, in city of Vijayawada uh, in near, near these cities. So, this is two decisions depending on many things, it may be depending on type of labor I get, type of raw materials I get, transportation cost, land acquisition cost, building cost and all these things. And another case considered I am able to build up a, another factory on the other set can be near Pune and another one say for example, near Bhuneshwar. So, in this both the cases which is basically Pune plus Bhuneshwar and other cases between the first example we will consider these decisions in such a way such that the expected value or the general utility or the decision based on which you are going to take a decision uh, of where to go for the first combination or the second combination would be such that the, the overall expected value or overall utility of the decision for the person who is going to take the decision would come out to be the same. So, obviously, if I take a decision and you take a deci decision for the same thing, it not may not give you the same same uh, uh, ranking of the decisions because uh, it may be possible that I like A and, and 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 then I prefer B less than A, but your case may be that you prefer B more than A. So, obviously, the decisions would change because they would depend on the type of utility function the person has, the age of the person, the type of family background the person is, by the type of uh, financial background the person is, what is the risk taking ability of the person. So, it basically depends on many intrinsic and not very objective uh, criteria, but we will try to combine them as far as possible in the different type of decision making process which we have. There would be questions from your end which may not be very satisfactory answered depending on when you solve the problem but they are generally used in uh, in a different scenario cases such that we are able to tackle problems in a in a decently realistic manner. For every gamble there is a certainty equivalent as I mentioned that. So, you have a gamble, fair gamble I would consider, but if it is a gamble where the probabilities are different still we will have a certainty value. For every gamble there is a certainty equivalent such that a person is indifferent between the gamble and the certainty equivalent such that the expected values for both the gamble which is the fair gamble in our very simplistic case and the certainty equivalent the expected value would be the same. Now, consider comparison between the mean variance and the utility theory. So, what is the mean variance concept which you are considering? In the mean variance concept we are considering that the mean which is the first moment variance is the second moment. We will always try to basically put the ranking on the decision based on the mean that means, from the maximum to the minimum or the variance from the minimum to the maximum. So, if you take a ratio as I mentioned in the first class uh, or a first lecture, it will basically be ratio of the mean to the variance and we will rank them from the highest to the lowest. If it is the ratio of the variance to the, to the mean, we will rank from the lowest to the highest and take the decisions accordingly. And the utility concept would be that we will see later on that mean variance concept would be true and, and it will basically give us the same type of answers considering the utility function is quadratic. I will come to that later on, this is very important. So, comparison between the mean variance and the utility function, the utility function used is basically quadratic which is u w is equal to w minus b w square 
and uh, there is no constant term for the time being. The actually the quadratic function would have been a w minus plus b w square plus c. So, a b c would be the parameters whether positive or negative that is a different question. The util function is used uh, which is a quadratic function and quadratic function would have some significance later on. Consider we have three assets and the prices are as follows. Now, here if you look at the chart what, what we are doing this is a, again a hypothetical example we are taking the numbers that means the serial number depending on what is the outcome and the decisions are A, B, C and the prices are given as prices or the values are given like in the second column, third column, fourth column corresponding to the fact that we are trying to find out the outcomes for A, B, C respectively. So, in the fourth, fifth and sixth, we are trying to find out the returns for A, B and C the returns are given because it will basically be returns can be if we know. So, in one case I will use as I 1 is the input which is happening for time period 1 and after some time period I get an output which is I 2. So, I'm, I do not want to go to the exact values. So, there can be two, two type returns return capital R is I uh, I 2 by I 1 and small return would be I 2 minus I 1 divided by I 1. Another one in the case when you are considering the financial returns we consider. So, this is 1 2 ln of I 2 by I 1. So, we are only we will consider anything and then proceed we are considering for the time being capital R. So, the capital R values are given for A, B, C the probabilities we consider is 1 fifth, 1 fifth, 1 fifth for all the cases. This is a simplistic case. Based on that we find out the returns average returns that means add them up divide by the number outcomes. So, those are given r bar a r bar b r bar c and the sigma which is the standard deviation or the standard error for this sample for r a r b r c returns are given again calculated. I am just putting it a tick mark so you can understand. Now, I, I consider the weights average to be given which is the wealth given as 114, 119 and 100. Based on that we use the concept that what is the value that uh, the if the risk free interest rate is given as 0 0.5 then what is the mean using the mean variance ranking system I will rank them such that the values are greater than 0 0.5. So, I find out these values. Now, the issue is that if you use the utility ranking based on the quadratic concept and if you use the ranking system based on the normative distribution such that you rank them over and above a certain probability, the ranking would always be the same. Reason being in a very simplistic sense quadratic utility function and normality of the returns go in hand in hand. So, if the utility function in general, general is quadratic your returns would be normal and vice versa. So, we are in a position where the normal distribution can be utilized, its properties can be utilized in a very big way considering the util function is quadratic. So, this slide which you are seeing I will again consider this slide and the example in the next class and with this I will end the class considering the 30 minutes are almost over and, and I would like to go into the details of these problems once more so that you un can understand and tackle such problems in the assignments which are going to come. Have a nice day and thank you very much.